Hello, Anime Visor here. With the Summer 2019 Anime Review, where I go over the anime I previewed at the start of the season, assuming they finished airing. There are actually three anime that I previewed at the start of the season that are still airing. Vinland Saga, Fire Force, and Dr. Stone. So I won't have a full review of them here, but I will give my impressions on them so far later in the video. That leaves two anime to cover that started airing in the summer season, however we've also got a couple of leftover anime from the spring season that I originally previewed that have now finished airing, so I'll be covering those two here as well. Very true. Anyway, go ahead and let us know what your favorite anime was this season in the comments below as Singham and I start with the leftover spring 2019 anime. Up first, Fruits Basket. After a family tragedy turns her life upside down, 16-year-old high schooler Toru Honda takes matters into her own hands and moves out into a tent. Unfortunately for her, she pitches her new home on private land belonging to the mysterious Soma clan, and it isn't long before the owners discover her secret. But as Toru quickly finds out when the family offers to take her in, the Somas have a secret of their own. When hugged by a member of the opposite sex, they turn into animals of the Chinese Zodiac. I'll start off by saying I mostly enjoyed my time with Fruits Basket. It's got some decent animation, a strong story, and some really good and fun characters. Well, fun when they're not being traumatized by their dark pasts. That's something this anime does well. It at times has a darker, more somber, or dramatic feel to it, but balances it very well with fun, lighthearted comedy. With Fruits Basket, you're just as likely to shed a tear as have a little laugh. That can sometimes be hard for an anime to balance, but Fruit Basket does it well, and I think a big reason it does so is because of how well it handles its characters. Part of the premise to the anime is that as Toru is living with the Somas, she slowly starts to meet the other members of the Zodiac. And if I'm honest, I didn't find every character all that interesting or every episode a winner as it explored the other Zodiac members, but times when it really stood out was when the anime focused on Toru's friends, Oichan and Hanachan, showing that it's not just Zodiac members that have gone through some rough times. And their stories are really well done. I feel that there's so much potentially there that they could both have their own separate spin-off anime following them. Those episodes are really that good and also show how accepting Toru is as a person almost too well. I won't go into it too much to avoid spoilers, but there's a certain scene between Toru and Kyo towards the end of the season that I understand is supposed to be a powerful scene, but it kind of falls flat to me because I knew Toru would be accepting of Kyo no matter what. Considering she became friends with a very serious delinquent and a psychic who can potentially kill someone with her thoughts, I didn't think the stuff with Kyo was all that big a deal. Obviously for his character it is, but as for us, the audience, I think it was clear Toru wasn't ever going to push him away. Overall, Fruits Basket was pretty good. Is every episode a winner? No. But there are some really well done ones, with some really good characters. If you can get past some of the slower bits, I think Fruits Basket is worth the watch. Up next, the other leftover, Carol and Tuesday. 50 years have passed since mankind began migrating to the new frontier, Mars. It's an age where most culture is produced by AI, and people are content to be passive consumers. There's a girl, scraping a living in the metropolis of Alba City. She's working part-time while trying to become a musician. She's always felt like something is missing. Her name is Carol. There's a girl, born to a wealthy family in the provincial town of Herschel City. She dreams of becoming a musician, but nobody around her understands. She feels like the loneliest person in the world. Her name is Tuesday. A chance meeting brings them together. They want to sing. They want to make music. Together, they feel like they might just have a chance. The two of them may only create a tiny wave, but that wave will eventually grow into something bigger. I'll say I enjoyed the first half of Carolyn Tuesday. Maybe a bit slow paced, but going round by round through the singing competition as it showcased various musicians and songs was pretty fun and entertaining. From Angela and GGK to the Mermaid Sisters, there was a number of good songs and performances as they all tried to earn a record deal. However, while the second half shows the process of making a record and even showcases what the price of fame can have on someone like Angela, the second half gets quite bogged down in political happenings, terrorist attacks, and refugees. 
and I don't think it's bad for an anime to touch on those topics, but it takes away from the characters and their story as they enter the entertainment world and how they learn to deal with that. It ends up making the character moments feel rushed and unfulfilled. Despite the name of the anime being Carol and Tuesday, it heavily features Angela and her struggles that feel kind of rushed towards the end and leaves you with more questions about her than answers. The ending in general feels kind of blah. Gus teases this miraculous 7 minutes in the opening the entire anime, and it's kind of underwhelming. It's a decent song and all, and I get the idea of having all these music artists come together to sing a song about a better future. Yeah, it's a direct reference to We Are The World, but if Carol and Tuesday was going to do that, I wish it would have established all these characters a little better. The anime had a fairly strong start but later gets caught up in its various subplots, which still would have made it an okay anime, but then had to pull a to be continued, in your mind, stunt at the end. Yeah, the anime has enough characters and by proxy stories that it could have elaborated more on, and to tease a to be continued to only slap the audience in the face with a in your mind feels like a disservice to fans. Just have the end or Finn, or you could probably have to be continued in your mind as an ending, but don't have them on two different title cards, keep them together like this. For me, how you end a show is very important, as it'll be the last thing the audience will see, therefore it'll be the freshest thing in their memory. I'm not saying it pulled a Game of Thrones or anything, Carolyn Tuesday had an okay ending, but the most recent thing Carolyn Tuesday did was give people hope for another season before immediately taking it away. Something me and Signum would consider to be uncool and annoying. As far as my closing thoughts on Carol and Tuesday, overall it was alright. Some decent characters that need more development or just screen time would have been nice, but it focuses too much on some of the subplots. I will say if you want to listen to some nice jams, check it out for the music. There are some really good songs, a couple of bangers, some interesting performances. I especially liked a lot of Angela's songs, so definitely watch it for the music. Moving on to the anime I originally covered in the summer preview, How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift? Hibiki Sakura is your average high school girl but has a ferocious appetite. Noticing her clothes tightening in lieu of her slowly expanding waistline, Hibiki looks to enroll into a nearby gym where she runs into Akame Sharuin. Akame has a muscle fetish and tries to convince Hibiki to enroll in the gym despite it having a high ratio of macho men. A good looking trainer named Narizo Machio appears and unknowingly convinces her to enroll and start her quest for a great body. For the most part, I found How Heavy Are the Dumbos You Lift to be an enjoyable anime. It's fun and over the top while also being somewhat educational about health and exercise. Every episode ends with a workout exercise that was usually featured earlier in that episode. While you probably won't end up looking like Machio, they are helpful tips to help you make that step into getting into shape. An interesting fact that I didn't realize when I previewed this anime at the start of the season was that the manga it's based on was written by Yabako Sandrovich, who was also the manga author for Kingan Ashura, and that the two are set in the same universe. In fact, a certain someone's mother makes an appearance as a teacher here in Dumbbells. While that's fun and interesting, there's a bit of fan service on both sides, guys and gals, which I know isn't everyone's cup of tea. I feel a lot of it makes sense here since it's an anime about Hibiki improving her health and fitness, though someone could probably make a case it's the male characters in this anime that are overly sexualized and pushing an unrealistic body image. I'll be straight up with you, no one who looks like Macho got there with just push ups and protein shakes. You'll need a little juice if you know what I mean. Steroid Signum. Steroids is what I'm implying. That said, it's not something that I think the anime is intentionally trying to do. Machio being so jacked is sort of a running joke in the anime. It's meant to play for a laugh. But the anime is so informative about exercise and health that I'm a little surprised it didn't address that in some way. Less about the actual workouts and focusing on the characters, I do wish the anime focused a little more on Hibiki's friends individually. She's the main character, so of course it's going to mostly follow her but I would like to have seen more characters like Ayaka and Gina, specifically just so we can learn a little more about them. For example, Ayaka's family owns a boxing gym, and they show it in one episode but never really gets brought up again. She also has an older sister that I completely forgot about until she shows up on the trip with them in the final episode. Gina starts off well. She's from Russia, who got interested in Japan because of anime, manga, and games, 
but sort of falls into the background as the season progressed. And I always forget that she lives with Hibiki as part of her homestay. Why do I forget? Because they show it briefly once or twice and don't really mention it again. It's an anime with decent animation and is fun and informative. While there is some fan service, and I kind of wanted to see more of the characters outside Hibiki and Akami, overall it's a solid anime. If you're looking for something comedic or one little push to help get you in the shape, then I suggest checking how heavy are the dumbbells you lift out. Coming to the final anime I'll be covering in the summer 2019 review, Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two Hit Multi-Target Attacks? After finishing a random survey conducted at school, Masato gets involved in a secret government scheme and ends up in a game world. And if that wasn't shocking enough, his mother Mamako is there as well. It's a little different than your usual isekai story, and after some bickering, Masato and Mamako begin their adventure as a mother and son pair where they meet new party members along the way, Wise, Porta, and Medhi. Up front, Do You Love Your Mom is borderline smut at times. There's some fairly lewd moments, but honestly aren't much worse than anything you'd see in say something like Konosuba. It's definitely no Queen's Blade or Valkyrie Drive Mermaid on the risque meter. And despite it being a comedy, it's not as funny as something like Konosuba. So I'm not exactly sure who this anime is for. It doesn't really go full lewd. And on the comedy side of things, it's the same aren't mom so embarrassing joke over and over, with maybe the occasional pun thrown in. I wouldn't say it's a bad anime, it just doesn't stand out besides its premise of a young man going on an adventure with his mom. That could have been interesting had it had a relevant message to convey about maybe Mamako's parenting, or a strong statement that the unconditional love a parent has will mostly go unspoken by their children. There's a few things I think it could have done to really stand out, but it doesn't take the initiative to do that. It didn't really deliver on the potential it could have had. It's unfortunate because it has a lot of time to make a statement to say something. This is one of those examples of a story not being paced too fast, but at times too slow. I feel it really drew out Medi's arc, as well as the Dungeon Tower arc. Both felt like they had one, maybe even two episodes more than they needed. The animation is decent and the character designs by Pochi are top notch. It's just a shame that this anime wasn't more than, lol, moms am I right? Wow. Okay, you really brought the mood down there, Signum. I am sorry you're an artificial intelligence that was based on my brainwave patterns when I first put on the CDR Hollow Nerve. Right. Anyway, Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two Hit Multi Target Attacks isn't an anime you need to rush out and watch. If anything, at least wait for the Blu rays to potentially get the uncensored version so you can get a little lewd on. That way this anime will be committing to something and not be in the middle of the road being all wishy-washy. To finish things up, I'll quickly give my impression on the three anime that are still airing. Vinland Saga has been alright, not too much to say as it's still setting a lot of stuff up, but the action has been pretty good. Admittedly, Fire Force has been a bit of a slog for me to get through, no pun intended, but it hasn't been so much a slow burn as it has been an unsatisfying burn. None of the characters have really interested me, and the animation can be pretty hit or miss. On the flip side, I've actually really been enjoying Dr. Stone thus far. That mostly comes down to it having fun characters, and a premise that involves it solving its mysteries with science. If everything goes to plan, I should be covering those anime more fully in the fall review, so be sure to keep a lookout for that. With all that said, that'll wrap up the Summer 2019 Anime Review. And what was your favorite anime this season? Let us know in the comments. As always, I've been Anime Visor. To be continued in your mind. And goodbye.